What is going on, Solo fam? My name is John Solo, and I am so pumped about today's episode of Messed Up Origins because we are talking about one of my favorite childhood movies, Dumbo. I'm not sure why, but I have always felt a special connection with this movie. Maybe it's because my mom dressed me as Dumbo for Halloween when I was a baby. Maybe it's because it was released on my birthday in 1941. Or maybe it's because Dumbo is just so friggin' cute. Whatever the case may be, Tim Burton better not ruin it with his live action remake because I will make a video complaining about it. Real talk, I'm surprised he didn't try to cast Johnny Depp as Dumbo, or at least the Ringmaster, because we know he's got a thing for Johnny Depp wearing top hats. In all seriousness, I've always really liked the Dumbo character, but the movie makes me sad every time I watch it. Seeing that adorable elephant get teased breaks my heart, and I'm not the only one that feels this way. If every one of you watching who got sad watching Dumbo liked this video, we would reach our 5,000 like goal in like, three hours. That would be a pretty cool experiment, I'm just saying. Being that the movie is already pretty messed up, you can bet the book is at least as bad. On top of that though, it's also just really weird. I mean, not only is the story itself pretty odd, the story of how it came to be is even stranger. We're gonna get all into that after doing our usual recap of the movie. As always, if you like this series and want to keep the episodes coming, make sure to smash that like button with all your heart so we can reach our goal of 5,000 likes and subscribe for new messed up content every single week. Dumbo tells the story of a baby elephant named Jumbo who's made fun of for his oversized ears. Other elephants call him Dumbo just to be mean because apparently none of them have any physical flaws of their own. Nope, not even this one. Dumbo is tormented just about everywhere he goes. At the parade, people are making comments about his ears, and back at the circus, a group of kids start straight up harassing him. When his mother comes to his defense and teaches those kids a lesson, she's put in a cage and labeled dangerous while Dumbo is left without someone to take care of him. That is, until Timothy Q. Mouse decides to be his guardian. After getting placed into an elephant pyramid stunt and ruining it by tripping over his ears, causing all kinds of chaos as a result, Dumbo is effectively ostracized by the elephant community and forced to become a clown, where every night he has to jump into a vat of pie. The poor little elephant is miserable with this job, so to cheer him up, Timothy takes him for a drink. What the two don't realize is the barrel's been spiked with champagne thanks to the clowns, and they end up getting absolutely blasted and seeing pink elephants. When they wake up the next morning, Dumbo has somehow gotten them stuck in a tree. After some brainstorming, Timothy concludes Dumbo must have flown them up there with his giant ears. With the help of a group of crows, Timothy he's able to convince Dumbo to fly once again using a psychological trick of a magic feather to boost his confidence. Back at the circus, Dumbo is forced to perform the same stunt as earlier and jump from a tall building. On the way down, he loses the feather and Timothy reveals the truth. The feather was never magic at all and Dumbo can fly all on his own. At the very last second, Dumbo pulls out of the dive and flies around the circus as the audience looks on in amazement and the haters get what's coming to him. This results in Dumbo becoming a media sensation, Timothy becomes becoming his manager, and he and his mother are given their own private car on the circus train. So that is Disney's Dumbo. I wasn't lying when I said it was sad, but at least it has a happy ending, right? Now let's dive into the origin story, and trust me when I say you're gonna wanna listen to this one the whole way through, or watch it the whole way through, cause it's a video. You know? The book that the movie was adapted from was called Dumbo the Flying Elephant. It was written by Helen Aberson, illustrated by Harold Pearl, and copyrighted in 1939 as a book. If you're anything like me, you're probably wondering what a book is, so I'll lay it out the best I can. It's essentially a picture book, but instead of having normal pages you flip through and a cover around them, you have a little box with a dial on the side, and the pages cycle through as you turn the dial. Some of the slides have text, some of them have images, and others have both. Pretty much much like any other storybook. It was a pretty unique way to tell a story and a very short-lived one. There was only ever one book ever published and it actually wasn't Dumbo. The story was called The Lost Stone of Agog and it's described as a fast-moving adventure story packed with mystery and surprises and crammed with heroic exploits. The Dumbo book wasn't ever officially published but there was a small number of prototype copies produced. Over the years, a good portion of them have been either lost or destroyed though. The book is actually so rare that Disney claims they don't even have the copy that was used when making the movie. Without a doubt, it's one of the rarest books in existence today. I could hardly find any pictures of it online, nor could I find a physical copy. And at this point in the series, tracking down old, rare works of writing is kind of my specialty, so that says something. It was through some miracle that around 1940, it came under the eyes of Walt Disney, who bought the rights to it and sent it to his most trusted writer, Joe Grant, who adapted it into the movie with the help of Dick Humor. And no, I did not 
not make that name up. Interestingly, Humor claims to have never actually seen the Rolla book itself, but instead just had the story retold to him by Joe. The two writers created the movie chapter by chapter and sent each one to Walt Disney himself for approval. Disney had a lot riding on Dumbo 2 because the studio was right on the cusp of financial ruin while it was being made and they desperately needed a big hit to save the company. If you guys are interested in learning more about how Dumbo essentially saved Disney, let me know and we can talk about it in a future video. Right now though, I say it's about time we get into the story, so let's get started. Just like the movie, the book starts in early springtime and explains how this was the season for circus babies. There's no mention of storks dropping off each new youngling, but we read about a baby lion, bear, zebra, hippopotamus, camel, and of course, a baby elephant, which everyone made a fuss over because he was the cutest of all. His mom, who's named Ella instead of Mrs. Jumbo, is proud of her adorable new baby, and unlike the movie, so are the other elephants. In fact, it was one elephant who specifically said that his ears were a sign he'd grow up to be big and strong, a regular Jumbo, and that's how Ella decided on his name. The circus is currently stationed in Florida, and the animals are preparing for their tour of hundreds of cities. For some reason, and though, as time went on, no matter how much Jumbo ate, he never seemed to grow any larger, outside of his ears, which he would often trip on. This resulted in other animals making fun of him, which bothered Jumbo and his mother quite a lot. But their spirits were brought up when the elephant trainer decided to bring Jumbo into the new act. To prepare for the big night, Ella washed her son and then hung him out on the line to dry by clothespinning his ears, which Jumbo was not a fan of. This new elephant act was about the same as the elephant pyramid that we saw in the movie, with the only difference being that when Dumbo got to the top, he was supposed to wave an American flag instead of a little flag with a D on it. Only things don't go as planned. When Dumbo was climbing on top of the elephants, he looks back at his mother in excitement, and it was at this moment that he trips over one of his ears, knocks down the elephant pyramid, and a chaos ensued that resembles what we saw in the film, tent collapsing and all. When the dust finally cleared, the first one to climb out from under the tent was Jumbo, smiling and waving his flag. As punishment for ruining the show, Jumbo was forced to move into the same train car as all the donkeys, and someone crossed out the J on his food bowl and replaced it with a D. From this point forward, he's known only as Dumbo. To embarrass him even more, Dumbo is forced to become a clown and perform a stunt that's once again pretty similar to what we saw in the movie. He's standing at the top of a tall burning building while the clown firefighters are acting like idiots all around him. He's forced to jump from the building because of the flames and he falls through a giant paper net into a pool of mud. Poor little Dumbo hates his new job and one night after his performance, he decides he doesn't even want to see his mother. He just wants to be far away from everyone, so he walks off the circus grounds. Before he got very far, he heard a cheerful voice call out to him and say, What's the matter, little fella? Did someone throw mud at you? That voice belonged to the book's version of Timothy Q. Mouse, a little robin wearing a red vest and gray derby hat, appropriately named Red. After Dumbo told Red his sad story, Red concluded that Dumbo must have a complex about his ears and brought him to see his friend Professor Who Owl, M. MD, PhD, LLD, uh, what's the rest? MD, PhD, MA, LLD, psychiatrist in Notary Public. So Professor Hu Al has quite the resume. Dumbo shyly admitted to the professor that he had dreams about flying, to which the professor responded, so what's stopping you? Go ahead and fly. That'll be $10, please. Red replied to charge it to his account and then asked how Dumbo could start flying. The professor said he'd only tell them if they gave him $10 more, this time in cash, so Red said they would figure it out on their own. Red's plan ends up being pretty risky. He brings Dumbo to the top of a high cliff and just encourages him to jump off. The poor little elephant, scared for his life, just starts flapping his ears like crazy, and Red says to just spread them out straight and soar. This results in Dumbo pulling out of the fall at the last second and gliding through the air like a bird. Every day, he and Robin would practice the same thing, and eventually Dumbo mastered not just gliding, but spiraling and loop-de-looping as well. The two went back to the circus, but Red told Dumbo to keep his flying a secret until the time was right, because he had a plan that would make them both rich and famous. For a few weeks, Dumbo had to tolerate doing the fireman stunt the normal way, but it was easier this time around because he had his buddy Red encouraging him the entire time. And then the day finally came. They were to perform the stunt in Madison Square Garden, the most important stop on the circus route. Dumbo was sitting at the top of the burning building, which was higher than ever before, and found himself so scared this time that when he jumped, he forgot how to fly. His eyes were closed and he was tumbling through the air with Red flying beside him, screaming until he had tears in his eyes, something to the 
the effect of, what are you doing, bro? Spread out your ears. At the very last second, Dumbo finally summoned the courage to spread his ears wide, and everyone under the circus tent gasped in shock as the little elephant flew around performing all the stunts Red taught him. He even gets a little revenge on the bullies like he did in the movie. He sprays the clowns with water, spanks the ringmaster with his trunk, and then goes a step further by flying out of the tent into the city, causing panic in the streets. Women screamed, men hid in doorways, policemen blew whistles, cars jumped curbs. Dumbo was scared of the panic he caused, so he flew back to the circus where he was met with an eruption of cheers and applause. He landed gracefully and ran over to his mother who was just so proud of him and gave her a big kiss. Their lives were about to change forever. From that point forward, Dumbo was the biggest attraction at the circus. He was advertised as the eighth wonder of the world, the only flying elephant in captivity. He was given his own train car with his name painted on the side in gold and even had servants to wait on him, his mother Ella, in red. And the final line in the book reads, and the last we heard, they were on their way to Hollywood for Dumbo was going to act in the movies. And under that line is a picture of red holding some papers that say contract. And that is the story of Dumbo the flying elephant. I hope you enjoyed it and didn't shed too many tears. No lie, I thought this was a really interesting origin. You can see exactly which story elements served as inspiration for the movie, and Disney's reasons for altering some of those elements are pretty fascinating as well. For example, he changed Red to Timothy Mouse as a way to connect the characters a bit more because elephants are typically afraid of mice, as we saw in that scene where he scared those judgmental old hags. But Dumbo still needed someone to teach him how to fly, so they combined that aspect of Red's character with Professor Hoot and we got Jim Crow and his gang. Yeah, his name is actually Jim Crow. I wish I was kidding. If you like this story and want to keep the messed up origin series going strong, it would mean so much to me if you hit that like button with all your heart to support the solo fam and help us reach our goal of 5,000 likes. Also consider sharing this video with any Disney fans you know who might like it and subscribe with notifications on for weekly messed up content. As always, the best way to stay updated on messed up origins news and what projects I'm working on next is to follow me on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So if you consider yourself a part of the solo fam, you should follow those. I'll be seeing you guys soon with even more messed up content. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.